The concept of protecting your 3D printable files that you release online is one that's become more and more popular over the last few months. And three months ago, I actually produced a video on protecting your 3D printable files using watermarks, which gives a layer of protection should you need to prove to someone that that file is indeed your own. Well, I recently got contacted by a company which actually has a new system for watermarking your 3D printable files. So what is it all about and does it actually work? Let's find out. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So this is watermark3d.com, a website that got sent through to me to test out from the company Treatstock, which appears to be kind of like an online 3D printing marketplace. I have heard of the name, but I haven't really looked into it too much, but I'm not too interested in this side of the company. I'm more interested in what they sent through, which is this watermarking service. So as I said, a few months ago, I discussed ideas of watermarking your STL files, either by putting an actual geometry mark of your like logo or name into the actual file itself, or uh, editing the binary or ASCII STL code itself to put in your details. But this offers a alternate method for putting a hidden watermark into an STL file that you upload. And then you can put it back into the system to read that watermark off. So what I'm interested to find out is how well it works and if it can be easily circumvented. So I'm gonna just get started for free and I'm gonna upload an STL file. So this is the VARS STL that I just made for my lofting tutorial for the CAD for Newbie series. And uh, it's a simple STL file, but nothing too crazy about it. And I'm just gonna enter Maker's Muse. So what this will do is the watermark will read back Maker's Muse, and um, well, that's the idea anyway, when you upload it again to their system. And supposedly it should protect the file. So it's saying all STL files are supported, binary and ASCII. Uh, but it's saying color extensions are not supported, so color STL files uh, are not, which is fair enough. Very few people uh, use color STL files anymore. And uh, the information will be placed inside the watermark. Please try to keep it succinct as possible. ASCII characters and symbols recommended. Something cool as well is you can actually put a watermark password, which may sort of stop people checking to see if there's a watermark. Um, I'm not sure how well that would actually work and how useful that would be, so I'm not actually gonna put a password in. And then you enter your email address so it can send you back the watermarked file. The service is limited to 10 free files per day, or you can contact them for a subscription to pay, obviously pay a fee to convert more. Um, I think for an individual, 10 is plenty per day. Uh, but if you are a service or a large company where you need to watermark and protect or give a layer of protection to many, many STL files. I don't know, maybe it's worth getting in touch and actually um, getting some sort of paid plan in place. But anyway, there it says the message with the link for the watermarked file has been sent to my email. So I'm gonna go retrieve that and download it to my system. Something to note is the email went to my spam folder. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you can't see it, it's probably in your spam and I needed to make it marked as not spam to click the link. The link does look sus, so I can understand why uh, Gmail marked it as spam, to be honest. So I'm gonna download it. Yeah, it really doesn't like it, suspicious link, but it is safe. I have tested it, I haven't been infected with any viruses. So here are the two STL files. Um, there's the original, which is vars.stl, and then there's the one that was watermarked, which is vars marked, opened up in Mesh Mixer. Interestingly, it's moved the file slightly off uh, it's original origin, I uh, find that a bit strange. I'm just gonna edit and move one out of the way, like this, except. Um, but visually, they look completely identical. So this is the original, and um, this is the marked one, and I cannot see any changes. So it hasn't done anything, at least visibly, to the geometry, which is great. So if you have a file that has uh, delicate geometry. This isn't gonna stick like a stamp on it to say, you know, property of blah, blah, blah. It's doing something a little bit more clever than that. Uh, I'm gonna hit W to see the wireframe to see if the wireframes change. So let's have a look. So the wireframe at the top here is the same and the side looks pretty close, but there is definitely something crazy going on here and here, here. So it has changed something. It's doing something to the actual actual triangles of the file, which is interesting. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of the original vase. Uh, delete. So, 
when I mentioned my previous uh, ideas for watermarking STL files, I mentioned modifying the, uh, the ASCII or uh, binary code for the STL file. And the idea of that is that it would be hidden away and people wouldn't know about it. But if you just resaved and re-encoded an STL file, you'd, that would disappear. So I'm going to test out that idea and that, I guess, method of attack to see if it gets rid of the watermark. So we're back on the website, I'm going to now check the watermark. So I'm going to check the watermark on the original file and then I'm going to see if the re-encoded STL still retains that watermark. So let's go to upload STL and um, vars marked. So, so I've got the vars marked, this is the, this is the original file that got watermarked and I downloaded. And let's see if this file has the watermark, which it should because it's the original. And yes, watermark found Maker's Muse. So that's the idea. You can upload it and to, you can check if there's any sort of watermarks on the file. And in a situation where you need to prove something's yours, you can be like, well, chuck it on this website and it will say property of blah, blah, blah. Busted. But let's see if the re-encoded STL file works. And remember that we put this into Mesh Mixer and saved a brand new STL. So we re-encoded it. Um, and in previous attempts to put a watermark, it would have actually gotten rid of it. So let's see if this actually retains the watermark that Watermark 3D applies. It does, which really surprises me. So the watermark has been found again, Maker's Muse. Which is really good because the simplest method of attack does not work. People can't just resave your STL files to remove the watermark, which is pretty neat. Okay, so re-encoding the file still retains the watermark. What if we start modifying it? So I'm going to sculpt some features onto this vase. Uh, let's go to sculpt and drag, and I'm just gonna just drag some points out. So I'm modifying it. You know, I'm modifying this file to see what happens. And I'm not really focusing on any areas, just pulling things around like that. There we go. So I've done some changes. Now, this would be like a derivative or something like that. You know, on Thingiverse, you have derivatives of, of files and then people will change them, link back. This could be something like that. Someone could get a file from you and then modify it and um, it would be a derivative. But what I'm interested to see is actually if this retains the watermark despite being modified. I've dumped the modified vars into the check watermark and let's have a look. Processing. Water mark found. How about that? So despite the fact that I modified the vase, it still detected my watermark. I am blown away. I'm not sure how this is working. It's very, very clever, but it is retaining the watermark. I'm going to actually go one step further and just go ham on this by just, just pulling it all sorts of places, going absolutely nuts with it. and to see if, if destroying it actually <laughs> makes it no longer work. Okay, that's that's pretty ridiculous. I'm gonna see if this still retains the watermark. I'm gonna say it's not, but it, I may be wrong. I can't believe it, guys. It still detected the watermark. Well, I guess that's going to uh, conclude this quick investigation into Watermark 3D. I really do appreciate these guys reaching out and setting through this service. Uh, if you have a file and you're releasing it to the public, then you're not going to be able to protect the use of that file because once it's out there, it's into the system, you can't stop the signal. It's one of my favorite quotes. But if you had to prove that a digital asset was yours, this may be the way to go. Um, it's currently free for 10 files per day for an individual. Um, this is not a sponsored video by any means. I totally expected it to stop working when I re-encoded the file. I did not expect the level of rigidity that this service provides. And if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, please do consider subscribing because I really do appreciate it. I love bringing you content and news and tests like this in the wonderful world of 3D printing. So till next time, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into water. He has actually blocked in space.